friends, welcome to tune in to Grace Unlimited Church Service Online. I'm so glad that you are tuning in and listening. The time has come for harvest, harvesting in the area that you are concerned about. It may or may not be known by people, but you surely know the blessing is from God. You see the mighty hand work behind the scene for you because He loves you. Before the service starts, do remember to prepare your Holy Communion, the bread and the juices, for we will partake together shortly and continue together with the Lord. The Holy Spirit is ready to serve you in no time. With a thankful heart, let's lift our hands high above to give Him our best praises and worship Him. Good morning church, welcome to our online Sunday service. I would like to invite you to come together with us and to worship and to praise our Lord, our King, who is our Redeemer and He lives, so are we. Come on. Let's keep it. Rescue my soul, his blood has covered my sin. I believe, I believe my shame is taken away, my pain is healing his name. I believe, I believe. Has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. Yeah. My pain is healing His name. I believe. I believe. I raise a banner. Cause my love has conquered the grave My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives I know you rescued my soul his blood has covered my sin. I believe, I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in His name. I believe, I believe. I raise a banner.
awesome and worthy We praise you Lord, we praise you Good morning church, I'm so glad today But before we partake Holy Communion together I would like to bring you in book of Psalm 91 verse 1 to 4 only Orang yang duduk di dalam lindungan yang maha tinggi dan bermalam di bawah naungan yang maha kuasa akan berkata kepada Tuhan Tempat pelindunganku dan kubu pertahananku Allahku yang ku percayai Sungguh dia yang melepaskan engkau dari jerat perangkat samar dan dari pe- penyakit sampar yang busuk dengan kepaknya ia akan menudungi engkau di bawah sayapnya lah engkau akan berlindung kesetiaannya adalah perisai dan pagar tembok haleluya praise the name of Jesus church make this a prayer that Jesus is our city of refuge and Christ is your fortress amen haleluya let's hold your breath haleluya Praise the name of Jesus. Let's just let's partake with gladness and simplicity of heart. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, by the Holy Spirit said, at the same night Jesus was betrayed to break and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take it, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the element church. Hallelujah. Just you see at the Old Testament, the, the lamb just been slain. But the New Testament, our Lord Jesus Christ have to go through beating, mocking, scourging, even he took the crown of throne on behalf of you and me. So that is the fulfillment of Isaiah 53 verse 5. And by his stripe, we are here. Say it confidently, church. By His stripe, we are healed. By His stripe, with long life, He satisfies us. By His stripe, our youth renewed like an eagle. Hallelujah. Let's take your cup. And the same manner He took the cup, said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood for forgiveness of sin. Do this often in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Church, this is the quality of the blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, they have quality to redeem you. Today, we are no longer sin consciousness. We are forgiven. Our past, present and future. And because of that, Jesus, our God, our Father put, we are the standing righteous ground for you and me. Because His perfect obedience in Romans 5 verse 19. Today, we are made righteous. If you believe it, just drink with me together. The element. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just right now is tithing. It's time for tithing and offering. Just, just uh, at this moment, it's a between the greater and the lesser. And the lesser. Just I want to bring you to remind that you put yourself on the lesser. Why? In book Isaiah six, uh, Hebrews seven verse six to seven. Tetapi Melchizedek yang bukan keturunan mereka memungut persepuluhan daripada Abraham dan memberkati dia walaupun ia adalah pemilik janji memang tidak dapat disangkal bahawa yang lebih rendah diberkati oleh yang lebih tinggi. There is we are the lesser be blessed by the greater. Hallelujah. Church, if you make Grace Unlimited as your home ground church, I would like to encourage you to bring your tithing and offering as a worship. You can uh, follow or refer to the description below in this video. Hallelujah. Let's pray over our tithing and offering. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this, uh, uh, with this tithing and offering we bring unto you. Lord, thank you. We believe you are our sponsor of our success. Father, we believe Lord, uh, Christ is our exceedingly great reward. Today, we are greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved because we are in Christ Jesus. If, if we are in Christ Jesus, we are the beneficiary, we are the recipient, and we are the ownership of the blessing of Father Abraham. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you because you receive it in heaven. With gladness, Lord, with simplicity of heart, we honor you, Lord, because you the supply in time of our need. Father, we thank you. We commit its tithing and offering into your hand. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hey, good morning, everyone. We are continuing our 
a series of teachings on harvesting. As we saw last Sunday, that many times we have the wrong impression that um, when we have sow, then harvesting will be automatic. That when we have we have sow, uh, we expect God to bring in the harvest. But uh, I showed you last week through the Word of God that God wants to give us the privilege of bringing in the harvest. They that sow with tears shall reap with joy. And uh, so God wants us to have the privilege of reaping in the crop, harvesting. God wants us to uh, enjoy this part of harvesting. All right, so um, this morning, I'm going to continue in this area. And um, so now imagine it's the same, uh, the principle in harvesting is the same as in the natural world, in the natural world, right? Uh, a, a farmer that plants a paddy or wheat um, does at harvest time, he does not sit at home and wait for the wheat to come in. He will go out and uh, reap the harvest. He will be excited in bringing the crop. Likewise, right? If you have, uh, you know, you have invested and you put money in the bank, uh, and suddenly if you have a need, and I go to you and say, hey, why don't you draw up your money? He says, uh, and you say to me, hey, I don't believe in drawing up my money. I, I believe in just leaving my, my uh, income in the bank, right? There's something is wrong, right? Something is not right uh, if we don't harvest, if we don't draw out, right? So likewise, uh, in the spiritual, uh, it's the same, right? So this morning, to begin with, let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. Let me read to you from the GW version, God's Word version. It says, Whoever watches the wind will never plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will never harvest. And then uh, from the BBE but version, it says, he who is watching the wind will not get the seed planted and he who is looking at the clouds will not get in the grain. Right? So many times right, if we look in the natural uh, circumstances, situation, we don't sow and sometimes we don't reap also, we don't harvest also because worldly wisdom cannot bring in a spiritual harvest. Right? Those things will throw you off, those things will hinder you from seeing the opportunity to sow, the opportunity to harvest, right? That's wisdom from the Word of God. Amen? So, uh, let me read to you again, right? Whoever watches the wind will never plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will never harvest, all right? Oh, it's going to rain, right? It's going to, uh, there's going to be a storm and we think naturally, but many times the, uh, the things God asks you to do, and I will give you, I will give you an example as we go along, right? In difficult circumstances, in, dif- in dif- difficult situation, right? God uh, sometimes will ask you to sow or to harvest. Amen? So the important thing, right, for harvesting um, is to go to the Lord of the harvest. And I showed you last week, right, um, that, you know, we used to pray. Uh, the, the Word of God says, to ask the Lord of the harvest to to, to send laborers into the harvest field but we don't want to be part of the labor because we think hey you know god's going to be difficult on me god's going to uh, send me to a place which i don't want to be right but actually harvesting is a joy it's a privilege and um well, let, let me give you an example right um the story that we have so we have seen for a few uh, weeks or months now at the uh, when 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 jesus met peter and when they were fishing the whole night and they caught nothing. Remember, they are professional, professional fishermen and they toy all night. In Luke 5 verse 5, he says, And answering Simon said to them, Master, you have, we have toyed all the night and have taken nothing. Right? But here's the key uh, to it. Right? He says, Yet at your word, I will let down the net. Amen. The key to harvesting is to listen to the Lord of the harvest. That's the first thing I want to share with you. All right? The key to harvesting because he knows. Many times we think we know. Many times our, uh, you know, professionalism, our knowledge, our know-how, still we cannot produce fruits. We, we still cannot produce a crop, right? And we don't know when is the harvest time. But here, right, um, the Lord of the harvest uh, produce for them, help them to bring in the crop that is net breaking, bot sinking amount, right? And God's harvest. It's never fair, right? Even in the natural, right? You sow seeds, you get a bumper crop. You sow apple seeds, you get an 
apple orchard, right? One apple, uh, from one apple there are many seeds, and from that many seeds you can get many apple trees. All right. So God's way is always like that, right? A harvest is the grace of God, amen. Even the nature, right? But I want to show you something today. While I was preparing, right, and I suddenly I realized, hey, how wow, right? How generous, how gracious our God is towards us, and we don't realize. We always, we always think, you know, he he wants something from us, but actually, his heart is for us to um, enjoy a big harvest. I mean, let me show you some more example um, from John chapter four, verse thirty-five. This is verse we saw at the end of last week's sermon. But look at it, right? It says concerning the law of the harvest. J- Jesus says, as you look around right now, wouldn't you say that in about four months it will be time to harvest? Well, I'm telling you to open your eyes and take a look, good look at what's right in front of you. These Samaritans' fields are ripe. It's harvest time. Amen. Praise God, right? So we know, right? Many of you know that um, the word of God is seed, and we sow the seed of God, right? But hey, you know, uh, let me give, let me show let me give you the key here. Logos, the written word of God, many times is the seed. That we sow, right? When we hear sermons, when we spend time feeding on the word of God, we are sowing the seed, right? But for for the harvest, right? We need the rima word of God, which is the spoken word of God or the word of God back alive, amen. To us, because many times you think, oh, the, the harvest is four months away, right? It's still in the future, right? Maybe four years away. We are expecting, we're believing, Lord, but it's still uh, far off, right? But hey, Jesus says, look around you, right? The harvest. With the revel- the harvest is now, right? The, is is harvest time now, amen. And praise God, right? You and I, as believers, as Christians, we know His voice, and His voice. Learn to listen to His voice, right? He says it is His soft, deep voice that is leading us. Um, and Jesus says, "My sheep shall know my voice," right? So you and I, we know the voice of Jesus. We have the leading of the Spirit, right? As many are led by the Spirit, these are. Sons of God, and so we we have the the Holy Spirit, the the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus living in us, and He is continuously wanting to speak to us, show us uh, what is ahead in every areas of our life, right, including this area, which is harvesting, right. Praise God, and um, and you know His voice, you can know His voice. I remember, you know, growing up as a Christian, um, I learned I learned to listen to the voice. One day, right, I was sharing with my boss, who's a Christian, and um. I said to her, right, um, "This is what the Lord told me, right?" Let's casually, I'm talking to Christians, and she turned around and told me and said, "How do you know it's the voice of the Lord?" And then I, I said to her, "You don't know His voice." <laughs> He's like, uh, "You are a Christian, you don't know His voice." And so many times, right, we, uh, you know, we, we, we don't realize that God can speak to us. Amen. Uh, not only through His written word, but with the inner voice, right, to direct us, or so l- learn to listen to his voice. And many times, uh, his voice is clearer than you realize, right? And you, right? So it's key, right? Uh, and he will not contradict the written word. Amen. Whatever he tells you, right, he will not contradict the written word. And you, you can check, right? Every, and so it's a big thing, right? God sending you to, uh, for, uh, you know, giving direction for big things. You can check. Go back to the word, right? You will not contradict it, amen. And uh, if you don't know, you can check with your leaders or brothers and sisters who are in the in the body of Christ, amen. And you know, right? Some uh, some people and throughout this year, you know, they they're going for, uh, you know, make uh, new directions for their job, new direction for you know uh, for important things in their life, and they talk to me, right? And uh, you know, just talking to them, hearing them. I know they already they already heard from the Lord, right? And many times there's a doubt in their hearts and say, "Hey, whether it's, it's from Him or not." But, but when you when you talk, when you share with me, when they share with me, I know, right, that the Lord has talked to talked to them and it's already very clear, right? And they just for confirmation, um, all right, press the Lord, amen. So learn the first key for a good harvest is to know His voice, right? Listen to His voice. Another example uh, is a story that we have uh, also looked at before. But let me show, let me um, show you a picture of this from the light of what we are sharing this morning from Genesis twenty six verse one, um, concerning the life of Isaac. Right, and, and um, it says, "Now there was a famine, right? 
this was like the famine that happened during Abraham's life. Amen. So if famine is in the world because we are in a fallen world, now you can say the whole world is experiencing like a famine, right? So Isaac went to the town of Gera to King Abimelech of the Philistines. And then verse 2, right? Look, look at that. Verse 2. The Lord spoke to Isaac and said, Don't go down to Egypt, right? So God can speak to Isaac. How much more can speak to you? Remember, they are all in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, where the Spirit of God does not dwell in man, right? He will speak to man, uh, uh, not not because he's in them, right? Sometimes through an audible voice, sometimes through dreams and vision, sometimes through a prophet, because God is not dwelling in man. But you and I, we have the Spirit of God in us, right? So look, look at that, right? It says, The Lord spoke to Isaac and said, Don't go down to Egypt. Live in the land that I commanded you to live in, right? Can you see that, right? There's a famine, all right? There's a famine, and uh, Isaac's natural uh, decision was to Hey, go to place where there's uh, where there is abundance. Go to Egypt, right? But the Lord said to Isaac, "Don't go to Egypt against the natural advice, right?" So it's sometimes when God tells you to do things, it will be illogical. It will be against the norm, right? But hey, listen to His voice, right? Listen to what He tells you, Amen. Then look at um, verse three. Praise God. So in famine, right? Uh, verse 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 twelve, right? Genesis. 26 verse 12 says and Isaac saw in the land right in that land where God asked him to dwell and reap harvest in the same year can you see a same year a hundredfold the Lord blessed him right and then verse 13 and the man became rich and gained more and more until he becomes very wealthy amen praise God right so learn to claim this for yourself right right amen uh Joseph right, became rich and gained more and more until he became very rich. Or John, right? But I, this is why I want to show you this, right? I was reading a hundred four. In the same year, can you see in the same year? In the same year, a hundred four. A hundred four, right? What is a hundred four? We don't use a hundred four a lot in this time, in this time that we're living in, right? Sometimes we use a hundred times, right? So a hundred times harvest. And I was just thinking about using percentage. You know how much is a hundred four? Return, all right. What is God's APY, right? Annual uh, percentage yield uh, for the bank, right? APY. You go to the bank, uh, May Bank, right? What what's your FD APY for the year? Two point two percent, right? Maybe two point one percent, all right. But God's hundred for God's APY is ten thousand percent, right? Ten thousand percent because one hundred one hundred percent is times two. Remember that, right? Hundred percent. You have hundred ringgit times two is a hundred percent increase, right? So that that is times two, right? But a hundred times increase or a hundred fold increase is ten thousand percent, right? God's APY, all right, is ten thousand percent. Can you see that? Hallelujah. So if you invest uh, or sow a thousand ringgit in God's kingdom, right? God's return is a million ringgit. Is that mind blowing? All right, all right. Um, so this is what I want to show you the hundred for right? I, I wasn't really going to talk about the hundred for but as I prepare, right, right, this just jumped at me. Uh, God's APY, right? Ten thousand percent, right? And sometimes uh, and I find I found it throughout the whole Bible, right? That God's God said uh, his return, his blessings is a hundred four. Amen. And uh, right, so some people don't don't like this, right? I, I heard one pastor uh, Who's preaching the word of God and he went to a, to some places and they tell me, hey, don't talk about the hundred four, right? But I want to talk about the hundred four for you, amen. Uh, and um, press God and I believe for GU, right? For Grace Unlimited, right? I I I believe in Jesus' name that in the spirit in the spirit, right? For a hundred four return for each one of you and as a church, right? For all of us, right? A hundred four. Return right, ten thousand return. Amen. All the seeds that we've sold for NGU over the years, right? All these years, amen. Uh, praise God, right? That when we come back, we will have a ten thousand for return. Amen. Uh, right for souls, right? For finances, for healing, for blessings. Amen. Ten thousand percent APY God's right. So hey, ex- exciting, right? Right. Let me show you from more from the word, right? From uh, Mark 
of the, the four verse 20 in the parable of the seed, right? I was just reading this and, I, and then I realized this. Look at this, right? Let me show you first uh, from Mark 4 20. It says, And these are, these are those sown on good ground who hear the word and welcome it, right? And bear fruit 130, 160, and one a hundred four, all right? When I was reading uh, another version of it from Matthew, uh, account of this Matthew 13 verse 23 it says and then the soul on good ground is this right he who hears the word and understands right who have a revelation of the word who also bear fruits and produce one truly a hundred four one sixty and one thirty right can you see that you can you see the difference right one says thirty four sixty four and then hundred four right? but in Matthew's account is hundred four then 64 and then 34, right? I don't think the Bible mistake, right? I don't think God makes mistake in the Word of God, right? Hallelujah. But I believe, right? Whatever you believe, whatever you want, the harvest, right? That you want to see in your life, right? Hallelujah, right? Um, whatever you believe. So maybe you're, you're just believing for 34, right? But hey, why don't believe for 104 return in your life? Amen? 10,000%. Returns in your life, right? You are 10,000 more health, healthier than you were before. Amen? Praise God, right? So when you take communion, when you uh, feed on scriptures about the word on healing, right? On um, um, scriptures, promises of God on healing, you're getting healthier and healthier, right? Praise God. That in this year, you will be the healthiest ever um, in your life, amen. I believe that, right? And don't forget to join us next Sunday. We'll talk, we'll be talking about the uh, promises of God on healing, right? And I will show you more verses on healing, more than you ever seen before, right? From scriptures, right? The A to Z on healing, amen. Uh, praise God. Let's look at Mark 10 30, right? So, uh, this is the key verse that I want to show you this today, right? Mark 10 verse 30, right? And, and uh, Jesus says, right, if you give up brothers, you know, houses, whatever, and follow me, right? and you shall receive all this. That's verse 29, right? But I want to focus on verse 30, right? And Jesus says, he shall receive what? A hundredfold. Now, in this time, right? Houses, can you see that? Houses, and brothers, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with persecution, all right? So when you... Uh, <laughs> When you receive all these good things, right? There will be persecution, right? People will get envious of you. But hey, I don't mind, right? Praise God, right? And it, when the Lord starts to bless you, and in the world to come, eternal life, right? Can you see that? And in the world to come. Sometimes we think, hey, the blessings of God, the things that God wants to give to us is somewhere when we get to heaven, right? After we, uh, after we pass from this life and we are in heaven and we shall receive a hundredfold, right? But can you see that the hundredfold return is in this world, in this time that you that you're living in? And it says part of these blessings is houses, right? And brothers and sisters and mothers and children, right? Uh, brothers, brothers, sisters, mothers and children. I can understand, right? I have, uh, I see all of you, my GU family. Um, I have more brothers and sisters, more mothers um, than than I have before, right? But can you see also that the blessings of God? And uh, if you the religious mindset wouldn't, wouldn't be able to take this, right? God says houses, right? Praise God. God's going to bless you with houses and lands, all right? And with persecution, all right? Because when God starts to bless you, people are going to get envious. Say, hey, hey, you're, prosperity, uh, you're preaching prosperity, right? Hey, we'll take that, right? Then verse 31 says, and many, they, and many that are first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first, right? So many times people quote verse 31, right? Just like that, out of the blue. The first shall be the last, the last shall be the first. But what is the context of verse 31, right? The last shall be the first, the first shall be last is concerning the hundredfold blessings in our life. And we are to be different, right? Hallelujah. Because sowing and reaping in the kingdom of God is different from what is in the world. Amen? And uh, so people are in the world, they are investing, they are uh, doing all these things, but we, they don't realize what is sowing and reaping, amen. And God wants you to reap um, in this life. God's gonna be a harvesting in your life, right? How many say amen to that, right? This is a revelation for me, right? This is something new, in, even for me, because for a long time in my life, I was thinking sowing and then uh, harvesting is automatic, but harvesting is not automatic, right? Harvesting, God has given you the part to harvest, amen. And uh, may you be able to harvest. Not just 34, 64, but 104, right? How many of you want 10,000% APY this year, amen? 
I want that, right? I want to see that. I believe that, right? I, I, as I preach this, I believe that they will see a ten thousand percent APY for for uh, for this year, right? When you come back, when the church reopen, maybe we will have ten thousand members, right? <laughs> Amen. The whole of G uh, Cannon Square will not be able to fill our church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for the seeds that we have sown. Hallelujah. The enemy wants to wants you to know that oh, sacrifice, so so so, but there's no harvest, right? God wants you to sow and to harvest. Amen. So um, let me lead you another thing. Right. So the first thing is that um, God wants you to hear His voice, so that He will show you where the harvest is. Right. Then uh, He wants to give you the hundredfold uh, harvest or returns. The, then the other thing that God wants to protect your harvest. Right. Uh, Leviticus twenty six verse four says this. Says God says, then I will give uh, you your rains in the season and the the land shall yield its harm, it is increased, and the trees of the field shall yield its fruits. Verse 5 Your threshing shall last to the time of the grapes harvest, and the grape harvest shall last until the time of sowing. Can you see that, that amazing, right? The, usually there's a uh, short time for harvest, but God says God's going to lengthen the time of your harvest, right? I mean, from harvest time to reach sowing time, I mean. Isn't that amazing? And they say, and you shall eat your bread to the full and, and dwell in your land securely. Right? So this, this is the thing I want to show you, right? What are two things that uh, is important for a good harvest? Number one, rain. Right? Everybody knows that, right? You need rain. Number two, protection, right? Protection from, uh, from, from insects and from disease and things like that right so these are two things right praise God so uh, these are two areas that God wants to do for you this is his part right? this is God's part send you rain and protect your crop at this time right amen so how, how is God going to how is God going to do that for you right and um, praise God so let me link you to Malachi right this is these are the verses that we read almost every Sunday and many times when type lead or Sam lead they always read from Malachi chapter 3 right and uh, so uh, let me show you why is it important, right? Malachi 3 verse 11 first. God says, I will rebuild the devourer for, your, for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field and, she, and not uh, fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Can you see that? God says his part is to rebuild the devourer, right? And so, so when Satan tries to steal from you, when the enemy tries to steal uh, your harvest, right? God says, I will rebuke your devourer for you. Amen. Right? So that's verse 11. But, we, and, uh, but look at verse 10, right? This is a verse that we always read Sunday by Sunday that we gave to you, right? What, what is the secret of this? Verse 10 says, Malachi 3 verse 10 says this, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, and there, uh, there will be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven, can you see the word there? The Lord of hosts, the Lord of angels. I mean, He will dispense, He will activate His angels, right, to help you in these areas, right? He says, If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down you a blessing until there's no more room, right? So, what's that? The rain from heaven, right? The rain and the protection, right? Rain and protection. So, what's the key? What's the key for, for these things? Amen. When you bring in the tie, amen. When you bring the tie, all right, um, and that's God's way, right? The the tie of God has been since uh, the beginning of time. This is God's plan. When you tie, God says, "I will pull down uh, the rain from heaven. I will protect the crop for you." Amen. And praise God for that, right? Uh, um, so tithing. Is God's way. Right? This is the way of God. Amen. Why is that, right? Let's look at Leviticus right, 27, verse 30. Says, it says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord, right? So the tithe of the 10% or the first fruit, God says, belongs to me. It's mine. All right. So your tithe, God says, belongs to me. Amen. And so, uh, every month, right? Uh, when I get my salary, when I get my pay, the first thing I do, set my tie aside. Right? I learned to tie, right? Since I was a teenager, since I was uh, when I was growing up, and it's it's never an issue for me, right? I don't question because it's from the word of God, right? Some people say, oh, you know, um, you know, 
I, I don't have to give 10% right? Everything that I have belongs to, the, belongs to the Lord, right? Okay? You believe that? Then give everything to the Lord, right? Be like the rich young ruler When Jesus says, oh, I've kept your, kept your law right, since I was young, right? Will you do that, right? No, right? But God, don't be too clever, right? God asks you uh, to set aside 10 So that He can bless your 90%, right? So, so that your whole crop is blessed, amen? So that the enemy cannot touch your crop, amen? So that there'll be rain on, the, on, uh, on, your, on, on, on your fruit, right? So there'll be a big harvest for you, amen? Praise God, right? So uh, we, don't have, we, don't, we don't want to contradict the word of God. The tie is in the new, in the whole covenant. Before the law was given, right? Abraham brought t- the tie to the Lord. Amen. And the Lord, uh, re- uh, the Lord the Melchizedek right, brought the bread and the wine. Amen. So every time you take communion, it's Jesus bringing you the bread and the wine. But we bring the tithe to the Lord. Amen. So that uh, the Lord can protect our harvest. Isn't it easy? Right? We just obey the word of God. Uh, it's something so simple, right? Because this is something that's not natural, right? It's not, it is supernatural, right? And we've been talking about it last, last week or the week before, uh, supernatural finances. God wants your finances to be supernatural. You want to walk in the natural, right? Go to the bank, put your money in the fixed deposit, right? Get 2.3% every year. I don't want, right? I want God's, I want God's economy, right? God's economy, right? And uh, God is always lavish, overabundant, super abounding, and um, He wants to overflow His blessing on us, right? And but we need to follow His word, right? Follow what the word of God says, Amen. And praise God, right? I, I believe, and I, when I'm preaching this, right? I, I see, right? You don't have to struggle anymore in your life, right? I don't use your head to uh, reason, right? Look, when you look at the crowds, when you look at the things that are around you, right? Then we forget to sow. We don't know how to. Harvest, amen. Because we look at natural things, right? Hey, I, I got to do this, I got to pay this bill, I got to, right? You're reasoning with human understanding, right? But let the law of the harvest, right, take over, right? Listen to what he says to you, amen, and bring in a harvest for you, amen. Praise God. And I think it's a good time for us as a church, as the body of Christ, right, to let the law of the harvest take over in this time. Even when we don't, we aren't able to meet. Uh, together, fellowship together uh, as a congregation, right? But the body of Christ cannot congregate, but we can go to the head of the church, amen? And allow him, right, to teach us to listen to, to, the, to his voice. Maybe we've been busy, 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 and his voice has not been clear anymore, amen? Maybe we've been too, uh, too, too busy running about, and we, we, did, we don't know how to listen to the voice, the voice of the shepherd, right? Learn to be like David, right? He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. He spent time listening to what the Lord, and that's the secret of his success. Amen. Hallelujah. You want a big harvest in your life? Go to the Lord of harvest. Learn to receive from him. Amen. Praise God, right? Just one more thing before we close. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, let me show you this, right? Um, from Matthew 6, verse 19, right? Jesus says this, Do not lay up treasures on earth for yourself, where moth and rust corrupts, where thieves breaks through, and steal, right? That's the natural, right? In the natural, right? Even you put money in the bank, right? People can still rob the bank, right? Even, even you know, some people hide that. I hear funny, funny story, right? People keep their money in the uh, microwave oven, right? <laughs> and accidentally, you know, burn <laughs> their <laughs> savings, right? And uh, you may hide it under the bed or things like that, right? Uh, right, so whatever is on earth can be, can be, Corrupted can be stolen, stolen, right? But Jesus says, can you see Jesus repeating himself? Verse 20, but says, lay up treasures in heaven for yourself, where neither moth nor rust corrupt, where thieves do not break uh, through, no, uh, no, do not break through nor steal, right? So when you sow, right, in heavenly places, right, it cannot be stolen, it will not lose value, right? Remember the verse that we saw earlier. I don't believe, right, is that, yes, when we get, get to heaven, right, uh, we don't need all these things anymore, right? We get to heaven, the, the, the streets are made of gold, right? Uh, the mansion is already built for you, amen? But God wants to bless you here on earth, amen? So this verse is talking about don't be natural, right? Don't be, uh, uh, 
don't try to get blessed by using natural way, right? But learn, right, the things of the kingdom, right? And let allow God to, to show you where to sow and where to reap. Hallelujah. Press God, right? So I, um, as I said, just one more thing here. And one more verse before we close. And from 2 Corinthians 9.10, it says, Now He supplies seed to the sower and bread for eating. May He supply and multiply your seed, right? So, so your seed supply is from God, right? Whatever God gives you, um, that's your seed, right? It says, And increase the fruit of your righteousness. I only saw this recently, right? Can you see the fruit there is your harvest. The, and harvest have to do with your righteousness. Right? And that righteousness is what? Jesus' righteousness in you. Praise God, right? So, the, so uh, just one more thing concerning um, uh, on a good harvest in these end times, right? It's a revelation of uh, our righteousness in Christ. The more, right? A long time ago, we always think, oh, we don't qualify. We cannot receive because I'm a sinner, right? And I fail God in this area. But God says you qualify because of Jesus. You're able to receive because of Jesus, right? So keep on confessing, keep on believing, keep on declaring that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. So righteousness was caused you to able to receive. You have sown the seed, right? Praise God, right? May God increase your harvest this year. Amen? Praise God. I believe this year, this season, right, will be a season of, uh, I mean, a generation of harvesters that will, be, will, will, will come forth uh, from the church. Amen? Amen? God's going to uh, need all of you to be good harvesters, right, to bring in the souls, to, um, to have good finances, good, good blessings in your life so that you can... Uh, you know, finance this end time move of God um, for this generation, right? So many of you, right? I pray this be a, this is this be a revelation for you, right? As I preach this, amen. That hey, God's looking to you, right, to be a harvester. As much as you want to harvest, God's want it even even more, much more in your life, right? Praise God, right? So meditate about this uh, this whole week, right? What is ten thousand? APY, right? What is the 10,000% harvest in your life? Amen? Maybe you've been talking, oh, 100% is a lot, right? But God says, my, my percentage is 10,000%, right? And uh, hallelujah, praise God. Can you see that? I think this is a revelation for me, right? Suddenly it dropped in my heart, and I pray that you see this. Hallelujah, praise God, right? Right, so let me pray for all of you, Lord. Lord, I, I thank you for grace unlimited. I thank you, your grace for grace unlimited is unlimited. And thank you, Lord. We have been sowing. You taught us to sow. And uh, but you, you are now teaching us by your Spirit of God uh, to harvest, right? To bring in a crop. And uh, praise God, the enemy has lied to us. The enemy has, uh, you know, uh, taught, uh, lied to us that harvesting is automatic, right? But God, you have given us the privilege to harvest. And I pray that with this revelation, we might... Uh, that we may run to the, the Lord of the harvest and allow you to direct us, to lead us, to show us where the harvest is. And uh, thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. So as we close, right, let me say the benediction, the blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance and pour forth His shalom upon you. Have a blessed week ahead of you. Have a fruitful week. The Lord's increasing the fruit of your harvest this week. In Jesus' name. Praise God. So I see you all next week. Bye-bye. Dear brother and sister, thank you for joining us today. If you are first time joining Grace Unlimited Church Service online, I want you to know that what you hear from the message is not a coincidence. Jesus loves you and He designed you even before you appear in your mother's womb. And our Lord Jesus loves you so much that He needs to go through the cross to take away all our iniquities. Would you allow Him to come into your life, receive Him so He has the right to bless you? If you are ready, let's open our lips and pray this prayer together to receive Him into our life. Father, I thank you that Christ died on the cross for all my sins 
and I thank you that his blood has washed away all my sins completely. And I thank you, Father, that you raised Jesus from the dead, where you pronounce me acquitted. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior now and forever. In Jesus' name, Amen. Brother and sister, if you met that prayer together with me for the first time and are new to our church, we would love to connect with you. If you are residing in Kuching, Sarawak, do WhatsApp us and type new friend so we can connect with you and we have a welcoming gift for you too. Our summer will premiere every Sunday at 10.15 a.m. So stay tuned by subscribing to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram, and like our Facebook page. Our announcement will be posted up on this platform from time to time. Please search in the keywords bar called Grace Unlimited Coaching in the search bar. This will be easier to get us. Lastly, always feel free to share the sermon to your friends and family, especially if they are new to this message. For our sermon is easy to understand and they may need the right words at the right time. Alright, that's all for today. Brother and sister, be blessed and I'll see you again. Bye bye! for me